Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at how we're gonna create a concrete base on which we can either build a hot tub or we can put a hot tub that we've purchased. Let's take a look. The first thing that we've got to consider is the weight of the actual hot tub. Once it's filled with water, it could weigh quite easily a couple of tons. So getting this stage right is, is really important. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clear the area and we're going to remove any trees, any shrubs. We don't want any roots coming through and potentially cracking the, the concrete slab once we have that in place. So you really do need to clear that area. Once we've cleared the area, the next stage is to put a, a base layer down. Now this base layer is with, um, it's generally with small rocks, um, we, we call it either ballast or type 1. And what you're going to do is you're going to use a, a whacker, so it's a, a machine that bounces up and down and compresses those rocks. And you're going to drive those into the, uh, the ground, uh, as you can see behind me here. Once those rocks have been driven into the ground and you've got a nice level flat surface, it doesn't need to be 100% level at this stage. What we're going to do next is we're going to build a wooden frame. Okay, so that wooden frame is going to keep the concrete in place and it's going to create a form, but you're also going to use that wooden frame to ensure that it's totally level. Because what we're going to do is once we've filled it with the concrete, we're going to just skim right across the top and if we have it completely level with the frame that we already know is, is perfectly level, then we will end up with, obviously, uh, lots of levels in this video, a, a level concrete base. Once we have the frame built, the next stage is to put in a, a membrane or a liner. What this is going to do is not only is it going to keep the concrete in, but it's going to keep the, the dirt and, and water ingress from underneath out. So the concrete liners, um, they should be made of um, you know, thick plastic material um, that you can find. You can pick these up at any Home Depot or, or good um, DIY store. On top of the liner, we're going to add a steel rebar structure. What this is going to do is it's going to give the concrete extra strength and it's going to prevent it from cracking. Now the rebar itself you can either buy in, uh, in strips or you can actually buy it in pre-made sheets. And as you can see behind me, this is actually Neil's build from uh, the case study on the website. He's used the, the pre-made sheets and it's much easier to put those in place. What he's also done, as you can see from the picture, is they're not totally flat onto the ground. He's actually lifted those up. Now you can buy um, actual sort of plastic sort of lifting pieces, or you can just put a couple of rocks underneath it. The whole idea is that the concrete can go over the top and underneath, so your rebar is in the middle of your uh, concrete slab, and that's where it's going to give the the, you know, the best rigidity uh, in the uh, in the structure. The next stage is to mix your concrete. Now your concrete is a combination of sand, cement and water. The mix itself generally it's one part cement to one and a half to two parts sand and then water to make it to a consistency that's a bit like cookie dough. So it's not too wet, it's not too firm. If it's too firm it will dry out too quickly which affects the strength. Once the rebar is in place the next stage is to actually pour your concrete. Now when I did mine I was mixing my concrete by hand and it's back breaking work so I would definitely recommend uh, hiring a, um, a cement mixer so that you can create enough concrete here to, to fill your slab because you're going to need quite a lot of it. Once you pour it you're going to pour it till it's almost overflowing. Then you're going to take a straight edge and you're going to use that frame because we, if you remember, we know that the frame is already perfectly level and we're just going to skim right across and it gives you the kind of effect that you, uh, you can see behind me here on Neil's build. It's a perfectly flat, um, totally flush concrete finish. When you're pouring a slab, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on the weather because you don't want any rainstorms coming and, and ruining the, the mix that you've made. Once the slab's been poured, you're going to need to leave this now for a, a few days to actually set. And whilst it's setting, you're going to want to cover it up because you don't want it to dry out too quick. If it dries out too quick, it will actually crack. So you're going to want to cover it with you know, some, some kind of a plastic cover uh, it just keeps a little bit of moisture in 
and um, you know, it, as I said, it will prevent the, uh, the cracking effect. Once you've allowed your slab to dry, next stage is to remove the wooden frame. And at this point, it's a good idea to mix up a small batch of uh, cement so that you can repair any corners that come off or any cracks that there are around the, uh, the edge where the, the frame's been in place. Once the frame's been removed, you're ready to go. Now, you can actually sand down if you want to, to get a, a smoother finish on your base. Um, otherwise, you can drop your hot tub on it if you've purchased one, or the fun really starts if you're going to start laying some blocks to, to build your own. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you on the next video.